awesome to have you all here. It's great to see some faces that haven't been around for a while. And uh, we've missed you all. It's been a very long, long, long lockdown. <laughs> so it's awesome to have you with us today. So I'm going to call uh, Reverend Christian to the platform as I open up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an awesome time that we can come together as a family, as one body. We just take this moment to dedicate not just today, but the week that lies ahead and the years and the eternity ahead of you, that it was all dedicated to you. Father, I pray that as River Fusu brings this word this morning, that you would speak from his heart. I pray that it would be led by your spirit. I pray that the seeds that are planted this morning we take root in those spots and bring forth the harvest and grow and plant your kingdom on here on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, sister. Um, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I came to visit and now I've got the pulpit. <laughs> uh, no, I won't take it though. Thanks for that. Um, have you got your bubbles? Yeah. Let me see them. You know, you're, you're a really meek Christian if you, if you not in the word, you know that church. Why? That's not like a good start, was <laughs> But you know, the problem is, I want to talk a little bit about being transformed by trouble today. But I think the church is weak. You know, what is best? It's because it's weak in the relationship with the Word of God. Because you see, I, I'm a man. I'm also, I have my, my issues and I get things wrong too. And so, you're just going to be following me as a pastor or me as a, me as a minister or whatever it might be. And you don't need this word. This word is not a vital, a vital source of inspiration to you. If you don't believe that this is inspired by God, we can get into a dangerous situation. And so, uh, even when, when I delve into this word, I find that the end times aren't going to be like this. Amen, pastor, preacher. Oh no, pastor, I want some grace and love, please. I find in this word, when I look in the book of Revelation, that the end times in the world, it's going to be bad. Very, very bad. Now we can talk on other doctrine that yes, the church will eventually, I believe the church will go before, but even before, the Bible talks that we're going to go through trials and tribulations. And I'll name it and claim it, I'll just get myself out of it, pastor. Says where in the word, please. Tell me, tell me, well, this is, the, Revelation says, this is how we overcome, by the, and, and the, by the Lamb, and by, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony, and the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony, that this has taken a hold of my heart, and that Jesus, what is your testimony? My testimony is that God is good, and God is gracious. Your testimony is that you confess with your word that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, have you come before the throne and bent the knee, church? Have you confessed with your mouth? Have you repented? Have you truly fall, fallen before the living God and realized that without Him, COVID-19 can, can do nothing to you, church? If you are, are right with Jesus and it's your time, then it's your time. Oh, wait a minute, pastor. I want to get a big bank balance and I want my health and I want this. Have you met Jesus yet? Have you met any of the apostles? Whoosh, whoosh met Peter? Who met Paul? Where are they? Did they die? I don't think death is an, is an exciting experience. Yet, when I look through all the testimonies of the saints that have walked on this earth before, the great men and women of God, those that knew Jesus as Lord and Savior, when they went to go to, to Jesus, their Jesus, there was a peace in them. And there are people, there are stories of people crying out, those that, that did not believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior. 
I think in today's age, we are so busy with a, a gospel that is not found in the Word because we, and the Word of God speaks on it, we'll be preaching a gospel for what? For people's ears. And truth be told, if you realize that you can, that if you realize, church, that trouble will come your way, how you handle it is going to dictate your relationship with God. Trouble will come your way. I can promise you that. Who you has in their trouble? So why are you so surprised when you have it? Please explain that to me. And then what do we do? Oh, Lord. Oh, I must be careful. I mustn't get too close. Oh, Lord, why me? Let me ask you, why not you? Who are you? What did Jesus do? Please note that cross is empty. What did Jesus do for you? He died on the cross for, for what? For your sins. For my sins. I'm not preaching at you, please. I'm just passionate. So if you're feeling like, oh, I'm, feeling, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm convicting you. Hopefully the Holy Spirit can do that conviction. But the, the truth is, is that we get so full of ourselves and what God can do for me in this world that we miss the true opportunity, opportunity that God's Word says, therefore you go and what? Just get more of yourself. Or go and make disciples. Jesus walks up to, to, the, to, to his uh, disciples, his apostles, and he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now, therefore, you, not the pastor, not the eldership, therefore you, church, go and make disciples, baptizing them in what? In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God three in one. And then, and then when, we, when, when we come across any type of trial, or if we are challenged to get out of the church building, you know, you know, church, you are a living entity. Amen. I've just seen what COVID-19 has done is revealed to us as a church who is really a cross follower and who is not. How many people have been so afraid of what might happen? Think about it. Are you letting fear drive you or are you letting Jesus drive you? So many people are so fearful about what's going to happen in our country. Do you think this country is going to be immune to when Jesus comes? Do you think the end times this country is going to be immune? Do you think you're going to be immune? What is it that will take us, translate us from this reality to the reality of heaven? And there's only one. Who is that? Jesus. So stop worrying about all the other stuff. I'm not saying stop worrying about the COVID stuff. COVID is real. We've buried quite a few folk. COVID is real. But the reality is, if you become what you focus on, isn't it? So, so how, how's, trouble, how's the trouble of these last six months? What has it been for you, church? Don't you want to turn to uh, the book of 2 Corinthians 4, and we'll read verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Hey, how's that? I've got a 20 rand in my Bible. Double blessing. Wow. I'll, I will leave it here for the church. There we go. To God be the glory. <laughs> you see, church, some of the... Till what time can I go, Pastor? Till I'm finished. Praise the Lord. So, so you see, the issue is church. We have an expectation. I want to tell you this. If you are out of God's will, you can go to church every single day if you want to, and you're not going to feel blessed. You're not going to feel like you're going to feel life is overwhelming you if you're out of God's will, if you're not in a relationship with God. You know, when you're in God's will, it doesn't mean to say that it's only when you come to church. It doesn't mean to say you can be out of God's will reading the Word and you will not be happy. You will know you're out of God's will. You know, that's in the Bible. You know, so many people did move out of God's will. Lord, send anyone but me. Lord, that's not for me. I'm still young with the Lord. Lord, rather send Pastor Lindeen. Rather send Pastor Anka. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our, our what? Our light affliction. Boy, I've had to sit in counseling with people and they are just so broken. Why, why, Pastor, must this happen to me? 
And as soon as I start working with them and saying, let's, let's go through Scripture. Let's ask, what did, what did Jesus do for you, church? What is the price that Christ has paid for you? How much have you been connecting to Jesus? Have you been reading His Word? Have you been, have you been in prayer? And as soon as you are, and as soon as you grow in your relationship with Jesus, I can tell you the, the affliction that you endure seems light. And that's how when we can read this, we go, what light affliction? Which is but for a moment. Remember, I've done this here before. The knots in a long rope, you've got two knots. That's, that's our time on earth. The rest of the rope is eternity, yet what we do between the not one and not two dictates where we're going to spend eternity. Isn't that, that should frighten us, church. We should be going, I want to do as much as I can. Let's be careful, I'm going to fall of this. No, I'm not. So, so this, the, the, between not A and B is how, going to dictate how you will live eternity. And then as soon as something negative happens, stuff or something bad, we go and sit, we fall to pieces. And then we struggle to, to hear from God because we're so busy with ourselves. Whoa, wait, pastor, I, I didn't come to church to... You see, that's the thing. God forbid that someone preach on sin today in the church and then everyone's not for them. Yet what does the Word say? How can we be a holy church if we don't want a, the full revelation of God's Word? How can we be a holy church? How can we expect revival? Do you expect revival in Southern Africa, in South Africa, and Africa as a continent? I do. We've had revival everywhere, but yeah, I can see God's busy preparing the ground. Hosea 10 verse 12, he says, so, so up your fellow ground. Start working it. Are you working your fellow ground, church? Are you ready for the revival that God has in store for us as a church? Because you see, revival starts with, we were talking about it today, repentance. And so often we get so full in our suffering of ourselves. You see, when suffering comes your way, you quickly see whether you've been living your life for yourself or for Jesus. Amen, pastor. <laughs> because when you're living for yourself, you start complaining about your woes. It's true. But when you're living for Jesus, you know you should be, you will know God's will. You'll know you're in God's will. What about the missionary that God has sent to China to go and die, or wherever? Oh God, send me anywhere but China. You know where you're going, eh? A pastor, Dean, a pastor and Dean, she can go to China. Look, I don't, I don't want to go to China. You know, God's going to send you, put you out of your box. Whatever is number one in your life, if it's not God, He's going to challenge you with church. Have you been challenged over COVID-19? What have you been challenged with? What has been real cool? Have you been focusing on Jesus or has it been all the circumstances? One thing that COVID-19 taught me is that I was fooling myself. I know this is going to be a surprise for you. I thought I was an introvert. Thank you, Pastor Ledeen, for laughing to that. I really did. I don't know why. I, did. I think I was an introvert when I was young, but I realized I'm an extrovert and I love people. Because the first 21 days, we had it all planned and we had all of our videos done and everything and we were just sending out, but I didn't to get to interact with people. And I realized how much I miss people and what people mean to me. But translated that, for me, it was I needed to go and minister. I needed to go and get involved in people's lives. Let me finish this, then we can... For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Church, don't focus on the temporary. That's how Satan gets you off target. That's how your flesh gets you off target. You see, church, God uses circumstances to develop our character. In fact, He depends more on our circumstances sometimes than He does the Word of God. Keep it in context of what I've just... Why? Why, Pastor? Well, you face circumstances 24 hours, 24-7 of the day, don't you? How are you reacting to the circumstances that you've experienced? How have you been reacting to, to the real challenge of, of COVID? And we can talk 
till the end of, and that's not for, from behind the pulpit, but what I'm trying to say is, you can agree or disagree with it, agree or disagree with what the government's done, but what are you doing as an individual with Jesus in this time? How have you reacted? Or have you not reacted? And ask God, reveal to me the shortcomings, Lord, in my heart that I need to grow. I've just experienced so much fear in the church. So much fear. Warren Webster said this, a faith, quite profound, he said, a faith that cannot be tested, cannot be trusted. A faith that cannot be tested, cannot be trusted. Don't pray your way out of testing, man. Pray your way into it and through it. It's a big one, that. It's a big life change there, church. Jesus warned us that we will have problems in this world. He didn't. Jesus warned us. John 16, 33 says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. And here it is, hallelujah. I have overcome the world. So if you are walking in Jesus, regardless, we know that this world is going to become new again. Christ will come and there will be a lot of blood. Christ is Savior, but He's also Judge. We were talking about it this morning as we were having our pastor's prayer meeting. In actual fact, in Revelation, uh, Christ talks about his, his, his garments and, the, and the, he's asked, what is that? And it's like, he says, it's the blood of those that I have crushed. Oh, didn't see Jesus quite like that, did you? Because we get this gospel that, oh, Jesus is all. Jesus is, a, a God, Jesus is God and he will return. When he returns, he will return as king. And so we know this world will become will become what God has ordained. But currently, God is in you. God has a plan for you in this world. Not, not you have a plan for God. Please hear me out tonight, because so many people plan their life, and then God must fit in their plans. It's exactly the opposite. And I believe life is a series of problems. You solve one, you get another one. And how we react to problems, how we re react to trials, how we interact with God and the Holy Spirit. And recently I preached on the Holy Spirit being your God. Because the, the question is, in this trial, in, the, in this, this transformation of trouble, Pastor, how do I actually work through this? Well, quite simply, by listening to the Holy Spirit. By, by the infilling and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, by accepting the fullness of the Holy Spirit, by number one, receiving Jesus, repenting of your sin, receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and, and bending the knee and saying, Lord, for I, I come to you, Jesus, I recognize that you died on the cross of Calvary for me and my sin, all of my sin. That that I have, that that, that I'm going to, and that that I haven't. All of my sin, you have paid the price for, Lord. And then as we look to the book of Acts 2, and we see when the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, Great is He that is coming, I must go. And so He's talking about the Holy Spirit that then comes and indwells. And we have these apostles that before were a little bit weak, Peter denying Christ, and afterwards they cannot, they are just filled with Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so church, if you are struggling to come to church for an hour, that's nothing. You should be living Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I know there's been some, uh, it's, it, I understand, it's a, it's a trial, it's a challenging time. I know there's been real mental health issues, people sitting alone. I've got that bit, I'm not, I'm not denying that. But I know this, that when I was really struggling in that third week, after the 14 days, man, I was missing people. Really missing people. But I know, and Pastor Anka can I vouch, I did say, I just, in that time, I drew so much more closer to God. Because what I needed to do there was be intentional with how I'm drawing nearer to God. And so, in, in the, the tw first 21 days actually ended it for me, because I'm sure we all got busy lives, but my life is hectic. Even though you do God's work, sometimes you can do a whole bunch of hectic things, and yes, you've got your, your quiet time, you should, although... When we look at pastors um, and the test of that, that's not always necessary where it should be. 
but I, my devotional life has always been solid over the years. But it just got so much better. So how did you, how did you fare? If we had to write the test. How did you fare over this, this lockdown period? Have you been growing? Pray, praise God, sister. That's, that's the challenge, isn't it? Because that's what makes Christianity and being a Christ follower so radical and barbarian. Owen McManus wrote the book Barbarian for Christ. Very profound book for me. Just so much scripture, but just really saying living barbarian for Jesus. So that's 20 Four, seven, for Jesus. Peter says, yeah, your problems are normal. He says in 1 Peter 4, 12, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. And I think and that's when we come to this scenario of why me. Always ask yourself when you're busy in that, in that, uh, that sorrowful state of, you know, because what you're really saying is not me, rather, <laughs> really, <laughs> or rather, or rather, or rather, ra- you know, everything's pointing, excepting, yeah. And you know when you're doing that, you know what God's going to do, right? You do know that. It's like the China thing that I've said, Lord, send me anywhere. I'll go anywhere over the world to you, except in China. Or except in Bangkok, you know where you're going, Bangkok. You know why? Because that God is going to work, he's going to use in your life. And you're going to come back and you're going to go, wow, that wasn't so bad. I can go to Taiwan now. <laughs> really, that's the reality. And that's because that's the thing that God wants to remove from you. He wants to fill you with himself, less of you and more of him. And of course, when everything's cool and the bank manager's not phoning you, and you've got no financial problems, and you don't have to be, then it all becomes about you, right? How many multimillionaires say, well, I worked so hard? Really? You worked so hard for that oxygen? Just do this. <sighs> do that for me quickly. <sighs> Mahala, free, just for you, from God. You can thank him now. <laughs> really? You got nothing. You may have built millions and millions. But if you didn't get the oxygen free from God, you'd be dead. And so we know that as Christ follows. But I wonder, do we focus on that? Do we thank God for those things? Do we actually realize it? Or do we just live our existence and then as soon as we get into, a, into some sort of, oh Lord, whoa, is me, why me, Lord? Oh, if only it could have happened to Anka. Lord, I've been serving you in ministry for uh, my whole life and now I've got to face this and she's so new in the Lord and she's, why has she got, look how happy she is. Have you thought maybe she's happy because she's connected to Jesus? Just maybe. <laughs> and as soon as you take your eyes off Jesus and on everyone else, you will never be happy. When you, your neighbor builds a double story, you build it. He's going to get another car. If he gets a red car, you're going to want a red car. If he gets a white car, you're going to want a white car. If he builds a double story, you're going to want a double story. You will never. There's always someone richer, better, better looking, etc., 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 than you. You do know that, right? I know, you, I know it's hard to believe about me, but that's true. <laughs> so listen up, church. Yes, yes, the truth. Your most profound and intimate experiences of worship will likely be in your darkest days. It's the truth. But then we pray them away, boy. When your heart is broken, when you feel abandoned, when you're out of options, when your pain is great, that's when you can turn to God. And boy, isn't God just so spectacular. When you really hand it over to Him, man, God surrounds you. He fills you. It is like spectacular. You can walk out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change your circumstances. Your bank manager can still be phoning you. You can still be resoundly challenged by your financial situation. But however, you will have a peace that transcends all, un- all understanding. And you know what happens? People see that peace. People realize there's something about you. That no one looks at your bank balance to decide whether what type of character you have. Why do we... Why do we why are we falling into the trap of this world order, church? The more, I, the more I earn, the better person I am. Says where? Says 
his way. <laughs> One of my experiences that, um, have you ever, okay, you don't have to say yeah now, we won't ask yeah. Have you ever been in a prayer meeting and someone's prayed and, you, and you've heard this, just a major superficial prayer? And, and sort of the person's really praying for everyone in the prayer meeting. Or you've heard a superficial prayer, in a sense, where the person is, and it's all these long words, etc. You see, my experience is, when you're in a lot of pain, there's no time for superficial prayer. You get to the point, and you get to God, and you bend the knee, and you fall before God, and there's tears, and there's brokenness, and you realize, man, I'm yay, and he is all. And then you realize, I'm kulu kulu, down, down. I'm kulu kulu, he's alive, and you need him. And you might think you were so strong and you were so good, but he's better. You can't resolve this. Church, you get transformed by trouble. But there's this awesome thing called free will. What you see from trials and tribulations to grow closer to you. Not even just putting you through it. I don't believe that God would necessarily call all of that in your life. A lot of times it's your own your own flesh, but God can use everything, sister, every last thing, if you apply God in your life. So sometimes even Satan will bring things across your path. Sometimes you will, you will, you know, if you see the root, and if me and uncle are walking together, and she says to me, be careful of that root, Pastor Jonna, and I say, no, I see it, and I trip over it, and I fall. Is that God's fault? So now do I get up and go, oh, Lord, why are you bringing this across my path? Number one, that was me. Instead of getting up and going, thank you, Lord, I haven't broken my neck. No, no, Lord, why me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you see, we don't. We turn it exactly around. And so, yes, there are times that, that God, uh, when you are disobeying, biblical principles are there, God will bring you around the mountain. The man, it's going to be a tough one, that. Believe me, ran for 12 years. That didn't work out too well, as you can see. Um, and, and listen, in those 12 years, it wasn't cool. Because you, you know when you are disobeying God, you know it, right? Come on, let's be honest, church. You can be angry with me, but if you know you are disobeying God right now, that's between you and God, not me and God. And if you know it, then, then repent, turn. Say, Lord, forgive me. You see, that's what, what's, so gracious, what's so great about God, is that, is that He gives us His free will, but you still always have the freedom to choose Him. Even though you walk in your path, you can stop, bend the knee, and say, Lord, I'm sorry, uh, forgive me. And you know what? Your God was here all the time. And that's what the great thing is. But you need to bend the knee. Maybe you've got a bloody nose and it's a mess. But straight away we expect everything, you know, must change. From there, as soon as I bend the knee, it's going to change. God isn't your little genie in a bottle, church. He's the Lord God Almighty, creator of this universe. When he speaks, things are formed. Let him form in your heart. Let him change you. Who are you? Who are we that God should love someone like me? Who are you? Yo, pastor, after COVID, this isn't quite... Church, understand that. When we understand it from that context, and we know who God is in our lives. The greatest thing is that this God loved us enough to die on Calvary for us, and He can work in your heart if you choose Him. If you realize... That he's got a plan and a purpose for you. Just fulfill his purpose. Coming to church is to come and testify. Coming to church on a Sunday is a small facet. Now often, I think we all got to be honest, at times in our life when we were walking with God, maybe even today you are here, we come to church to just, to just uh, feel better about our conscience that's, that's burning the living heck out of us. Coming to church for an hour, an hour and a half is not what being a Christ follower is about. Being a Christ follower is about being a Christ follower 24 7. So if God says, I want you to go pray for that person, if God says, there's sin in your life, it's bending the knee, it's bending the knee. If God says, go to China, it's bending the knee. If God says, I'd like you to preach today, it's bending the knee. And then it's listening to the Holy Spirit and bending the knee. You see, no one walks like this with Jesus. You're doing the Spirit, but you know who's walking like that? Jesus. You are a servant of the great. I, most God. Servant. Not his Lord. His servant. And that's what I find so interesting as I close. 
in God's word, do you know that if we, are gonna, if we would be martyred for the name of Jesus, you know what martyrdom means? Killed. We should actually go as sheep to the slaughter. That's what the word of God says. For the name of Jesus. Read Fox's book of martyrs and see how many people, young girls, 13, 14, 15, some having going to be the queen of England and saying, I will not deny Jesus. I will not. I will die for Jesus. That's your call to radical barbarian Christ fellowship. So, we will not blow COVID-19 away, as some ministers do. What we will say is, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So God bless you. God keep you. Thank you. I felt a, a really awesome anointing, and that uh, must be for the church too. Thank you for how I was received. I trust that you felt the anointing too. If you are greatly challenged, good. If you are convicted, good. If you condemned, no. Satan condemns. Christ doesn't. He convicts. And if you are convicted, let the Holy Spirit move and work in your life. Seek God after this. Spend time and let God reveal to you where you need to grow. I don't know, but He does. So let's just uh, by the bow our head, shall we? And let's just close with prayer. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your word, who you are in our lives. And Father, so today we do pray that through your Spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Reveal to us, Lord, your plan and purpose for us. Reveal to us, Lord, the areas in our lives where we need to grow. Father, reveal to us the areas where, where, we, where we have fallen short. And Lord, we thank you as a people that every single one of us is different. But Lord, we know we need everything of you, Lord. So thank you that every single one of us, as we bend the knee, will have different aspects that you, Holy Spirit, are speaking to us on. And so just as a, as a way of faith, um, I'm just going to ask, I just want to, I don't want heads about, I just want you to raise your hand. If God has spoken to you and you say, yes, there's something, just raise your hand and you can lower it. That's cool. It's just for God. It's just, it's just an act of faith. All right. Yes, I see them. You can lower them. And that's great. Then you just say, right, Lord, I've raised my hand. I've got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interact with you, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek your face. I'm, I have an expectation for you to reveal yourself to me, Lord. That's it. And then, and then just step out in faith and trust God. And so, Lord, we thank you, Father, for who you are. We give you all praise and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. you. And my heart will fall holy as I love you.
this week and follow him with your heart in Jesus name and all God's people said Amen. Amen. God bless till next week.